work and sleep in the iron lung. And how do you feel right now? Out of my league. <laughs> I meant your breathing. Ah, oh, fine. In fact, better than usual. That's great. Shall we get undressed? Sure. The, the thing that's most shocking to me is uh, finding out what you did to your own body to be in these scenes. And can you just talk about what you did and did you have any lasting damage or anything from like, you know, the, the sort of contortions you had to do? Sure, uh, you know, Mark O'Brien uh, is a real life guy. He was a poet and a journalist uh, who happened to, to live most of his life in an iron lung from the age of six mm -hmm. years old. Um, his body wasn't exactly paralyzed, but his muscles were atrophied such that he only had 90 degree movement of his head. It's mentioned several times in the film that his spine is horribly curved. As an actor, you can't really just disregard that kind of information. So I uh, watched a, a short film, a uh, really brilliant documentary about Mark's life by Jessica Yu called Breathing Lessons. Mm -hmm. I could see Mark's body and see, see what, uh, what I was up against to, to try to, uh, to emulate that. Uh, he also speaks of, his, of his, uh, each physical part of his body in his autobiography called How I Became a Human Being. There's a lot of tools out there. Uh, in Jessica's movie, again, I could, I could see his body, I, I could hear his voice. I wanted to get as, as, as close an approximation of, of the real Mark as I could for a couple of reasons. One, I, I really like being specific as an actor, and there were a lot of specifics I could uh, lean on in that film. And also, I wanted people who knew Mark to be able to recognize him in, uh, in, in the portrayal somehow. As far as Mark's uh, spinal curve, um, I conceived of and helped design a soccer ball sized piece of foam, which I laid halfway under the left side of my back. Uh, and then in reading and, and in observing, I, I, I knew what each of you know, the other parts of Mark's body were, were, were doing or how they were placed. I wanted to, uh, well, I also learned to, I made my own mouth stick at home and practiced uh, typing and turning pages of a book and making telephone calls, things like that. I wanted the physical uh, side of the character to be uh, as ingrained in second nature as I could mm -hmm. so I could kind of forget that and, and uh, ultimately uh, you know, approach the role um, as, as I would to play any other human being. After all, Mark was a human being, so. Well, I, I guess shooting the, the film, I'm, I guess that's my biggest question is, you know, when he's, he's lying down and you, you have this thing of foam underneath your back, I mean, in between takes, were you sorry, taking it out or, or were you spending as, these long sort of hours or, or periods sort of in that, you know, I mean, you can be in great shape, any of us can, but you know, we all sit down somewhere and we get up and it's like, so I'm just wondering how much, how tough it was for you to sort of do this on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, it was it was a uh, it was a painful uh, thing to contort my body into that position and then try to hold it for for yeah. long takes. It was um, a real production getting in and out of the iron lung. So if if I was already in the iron lung on the on the foam ball, and they were changing lights or changing camera, I would often it would often be easier just to stay in there. I'm no martyr, and I didn't <laughs> seek out the pain though I did you know, insist on, on, on finding this device to be able to, with no body double or makeup or computer effects or whatever, to try to really portray this guy. Mm -hmm. I know the pain I felt is minute compared to what many people deal with day to day in their lives, but yeah, it hurt and was, was, uh, was uh, a real challenge. Um, I was seeing a chiropractor, you know, once or, once or twice a week during the shoot and he, he thought my organs were migrating in my body from lying in such a weird <laughs> position and the, his suggestion was uh, whenever possible to, between takes, to move the ball to the other side of my body and twist everything uh, the opposite of the way I would normally lay yeah. for the characters just so things might slide back into place. When you um, got the script and found out about the project, what about Mark, you know, um, surprised you the most? Like, what, what were you not expecting to find out about him sort of as a, just a human being? Right, when, when you, uh, well, for me to, to read a script about a, a guy who uh, contracted polio at the age of six, can only move his head 90 degrees and lives in an iron lung, I don't really expect a great deal of humor. Uh, ben Lewin, uh, who also directed the film, wrote just an amazingly terrific script that attracted not only myself, but Helen Hunt, William H. Macy, and a ton of other terrific actors. Um, again, uh, the idea that the, that the script didn't, uh, didn't toy with sentiment, didn't lean on the, the fraught, heavy nature of the topic as a whole, but instead um, 
seemed to kind of do what Mark did, which was which was fight against sentiment uh, and to and to just yeah. I mean, it, it it was that was a very attractive thing. The fact that it was funny. Find out what's next in movies, music, and TV at hitfix.com.